Let's start by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Wahawah Kapodas. In Hebrew, that would be giving all praises to our Almighty Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and that's to the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and also the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash. <clears throat> Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing us this truth. Honor to the brethren that's laboring, doing the work to push this truth, risking their life and freedom to do so. Also, honor to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people, who's returning back to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us in this time of judgment. Shalom, and we back with another live listen, live lesson through the empowering spirit of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. And I'm doing a screen recording because it's pretty windy. Um, it's cool right now, but every few moments it gets super, super windy. But we back with another live lesson. And something that happened to me as I was walking to my spot, that I wish I could have got on camera. Um, this African dude approached me and asked me what I was doing. I pretty much told him I was about to bring some understanding to the Bible. And guess what he said? He said, you don't look like a Bible guy. I told him, like, it's not the in it's not the outside. It's all on the inside. So it's all spiritual. And then, you know, he laughed, you know, for quite a bit. He, he got a good laugh out of that. Um, but, yeah, I told him it's, it's all spiritual. It's all on the inside. I told him all them pastors and preachers. I told him they telling lies to the people. Now did he laugh? But that shows how our people think. They don't see us as being a man of the Lord. Matter of fact, it's a scripture that I want to give real quick. I didn't memorize it, so let me look it up on the blue letter. <clears throat> All right, excuse me. But yep, Luke 7 and 35. It says, but wisdom is justified of all her children. So it's not our outward appearance that uh that justify who we are. It's the wisdom that we carry, the highest form of wisdom. The wisdom that is an understanding of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shad, that's passed to us from the Heavenly Father Yahweh, you know, um, by Yahweh Shad through the Holy Spirit. That's what justified us being the man of the Lord. Not what we're wearing, but our wisdom, because we got the true understanding of the scriptures, the highest form of knowledge. This knowledge ain't just something anybody can tap into. Anybody can study a chemistry book, a math book, a physics book, but not this one here. As a matter of fact, it's another one, but let me look real quick. Dang, I gotta highlight this, hold on. I got a screenshot that. Forgive me, I'm looking for a scripture. Dang. All right, forgive me. I finally found it. I had to search on Google. 
I believe this is. So yeah, just repeating Luke 7 and 35, but wisdom is justified of all her children. So what does that mean? It's not anything outward that makes you a man of the Lord. It's all, it's all inwardly. It's the inner man, which would be the wisdom. Meaning what? It's not your actions. It's not even the words you speak that make you a man of the Lord. Because that's all outwardly. It's, it's the inner man. Because with the true wisdom, not as an understanding, your words and your actions are going to be affected by the wisdom that comes from within. So <clears throat> it's not that your actions don't matter, but your wisdom or your understanding influences your actions. That's what I got to say. And if you knew better, you would do better. Those who got this true understanding, we truly know better. So we strive to do better. But again, it's all inwardly. <clears throat> and that's why when we hit 1 Samuel 16 and 7, this is concerning Daniel. So, so David, you know, was the youngest of his brothers. And the Lord wanted to anoint a new king of Israel. So David was the last choice of Samuel. So after the Lord rejected all of David's brothers, <clears throat> it came to David. <clears throat> and um, if he was going to read this real quick, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance, that's the outward man, or on the height of his stature. So your height, your tuxedo, your microphone and your platform, your, the smooth words you speak, that don't matter. So again, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. So yeah, all of David's brothers got refused. These pastors and preachers, these pimps, they all been refused by the Lord. They never had it to begin with. So yeah, because the Lord said, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Yep, so that's why the man said, I don't look like a Bible man. And he got a good chuckle out of it. But yeah, the eyes of the Lord ain't the eyes of man. Because man can only see uh, what's at the surface. The Lord can see you at your core, which would be the spirit. So that's what they got to saying that now oh, he can see right through him. Well, the Lord can literally see right through you to the core, which would be the spirit. But yeah, let's continue. For the Lord, Yahweh, seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance. So yeah, that's, that's men and that's, that's women too, especially women. Um, but who did they learn that from? They learned that from Esau. They learned or was taught that a man of the Lord would have polished up words, a platform, a tuxedo, a huge gathering, a TV station. That's what Esau taught him, the so-called white man. But guess what? The Lord said, for man look upon the outward appearance, but the Lord look upon the heart. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, he looks at the heart. You know, the heart representing your mind, your spirit, you know, what's really inside of you. So that's why many people be fooled. Could be uh that's why many people are fooled by the ministry. We just look like a bunch of really to them they just think we a bunch of niggas. Well we those niggas with the highest form of wisdom. And and that's that's the that's the that's the miracles of the Lord. Because with the with what did the the Pharisees and the scribes say to Yahweh Shai, he said, well, show us a sign. And what was that sign? Yahweh Shai said there would be no sign but the prophet Jonah, meaning that we can really tap into the scriptures, tap into prophecy. That's enough of a miracle as is. Somebody that can really go into the scriptures and break everything down. That's a miracle itself. So us standing out here with Bibles is a sign. Because what other man to do that for free? 
you know, not only that, the doctrine that we pushing is not really acceptable by man. It's rejected by no by most people. We push something that's not pleasing to the ear. And what did Job say? It's a dreadful sound in his ears. So the true sound of the men of the Lord speaking his words is a dreadful sound. Again, it's not pleasing to the ear. But prophecy shouldn't be. So yeah, yeah, hold on. How you doing? I'm doing good. That's good. So uh pretty much Speaking the prophecies in the scriptures that the Lord gonna destroy America like he destroyed Egypt and then he gonna save his people like he saved them in Egypt. That's why we see all these wars going on. Um, it's more believable now than maybe a few years ago. Um, America not gonna come out on top. Uh, and um, his people, the Israelites, would be the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Everybody that's at the bottom of society. We at the bottom because we disobeyed the Lord so many times. So he said, if you disobey me, I'm going to put these curses on you. And to summarize those curses, it would pretty much be that we would be the lowest people in the earth. Because, you know, we was going after the ways of all the other people. So the Lord was like, if you want to go after these other ways so bad, I'm going to set these people up over you. So, that's the judge. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. You are go. <clears> oh <throat> uh, well, any what the hell they what the hell they doing? Esau always protesting something. But see, it's a dreadful sound in his ears. This not pleasing to hear. Like pastors, they want to be liked. They want to be accepted. They're going to tell you something to keep you coming back. Well, what we speak, most people run away from. And what the scriptures say. Matter of fact, you know, I'm just calling out scriptures. That's not how we're supposed to be doing it. Because I'm just really speaking on the fly. But, um, and that's the purpose of this ministry. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to show everything that we speak. So what scripture did I just read? A dreadful sign. Job 15 and 21. So I, I didn't have a plan, but what the man said to me, you know, it's, it's, it sparked up a lesson. I mean, it's not really a lesson. We're going off the top of the dome. But what? A dreadful sound is in his ears. It's ultimately speaking about Esau. But after Esau, all the other nations, but also the Israelites that's joined unto Esau by his doctrine, his philosophies, by his economic system, wanting to be part of society, wanting to build in his empire, in his kingdom that the Lord is tearing down and what's after. And, and prosperity, the destroyer shall come upon him. That's Yahweh Shah. And what is his prosperity? That's ultimately talking about the new world order, when he about to fill his belly. You know, then the destroyer shall come upon him. But this is also talking about you Israelites. When you thought you was about to retire, you thought this year was about to be your year. You thought you was about to cash out a huge check. You thought for some reason that this was going to be your moment. In your prosperity, the destroyer shall come upon you. And that's not pleasing to the ear. That's why going back up, a dreadful sound is in his ears. And then, like we say, let me look up another scripture real quick. Proverbs 28. So what we speak is pretty not pleasing to the ear. That's why what? Proverbs 28 and 1 reads, The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Because what the people running from? All we doing is speaking scriptures. You got, you know, you got some people say they don't really like to get into that. They don't like to dig too deep into the scriptures. They just want to believe what's easy. Or when we speak prophecy, you know, they, they run them away. Well, if he was speaking about anything else, people would be all ears. But they flee because they wicked. They fleeing from the spirit of the Lord. But that's why it says the righteous are bold as a lion. That's the man of the Lord on the front line. 
I mean, really, it's not even just the man of the, I mean, it, it begins with the man of the Lord, but before that, it was Yahweh Shai, then the prophets, the man of the Lord, and also the believers. Because the believers, they be bold as a lion every day. All the stuff, we, you are the believers that you reject, that you turn down. You know, people say something, a lot of our people that's the true believers, they correct people. You know, in the middle of a conversation, and then people don't want to hear it. They don't want to talk to us no more. They flee from us because they wicked. Now, going back to Samuel, uh, because man look up on the outward appearance, but the Lord look up on the heart. Now, it's a scripture that I was going to go to next that slipped my mind. That's why I was going to go to the first chapter of John. We're just going to read, because I don't know really what verse I'm looking for, but we're just going to read through. <clears throat> All right, so John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word. Who is the Word? Um, that's your house. Oh, hold on. So really, this word would be Yahweh Shai, because remember, Yahweh Shai is the word made flesh. So in the beginning was the word, and what proves it? And the word was with God. This word is capitalized. Cap, cap, damn, I can't even say it. Capitalized, indicating that it's a power. That's Yahweh Shai. So again, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh. And this is actually stated incorrectly. When it reads, and the word was God, that's incorrect. Because how can the word be with God, and how can the word be God at the same time? So uh, Esau messed that up. But, you know, I got that from Elder Apostle Tahar. But let's continue. The same was in the beginning with God, with Yahweh. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And life was in him, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. This is talking about Yahweh Shai. The light was in the darkness, and the, uh, doing all right? Yeah. And that light was Yahweh Shai, his wisdom, not as an understanding. In the darkness, the people of the world comprehended it not. Let's talk about the Israelites that rejected him. So when it says all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, and life was in him, and the life was the light of men, that light shined in darkness, and that darkness comprehended it, not, comprehended it not. So that light, that was the life in men, that light was Yahweh Shai. That's why it says all things were made by him. It's talking about Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> but the focus that I'm looking for is, I guess we start at verse 5 again. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Yeah, people can't comprehend us to be the men of the Lord. And what's this light that shineth in darkness? Is that wisdom not as an understanding? It's bringing all things to the light. That's why when somebody cheating or doing something sneaky, what they say, well, sooner or later it'll come to the light, meaning you can see it. Because when you're in the light, all things can be seen. So the light shineth in darkness. That's the world full of misinformation, lies, and deceit. And right now, again, even in this generation, the light is shining in darkness. The light being as wisdom, not as an understanding. The darkness being the world and its philosophies. And the darkness, the people of the world comprehended it not. And again, going back 
but wisdom is justified of her children. That's that light that can't be comprehended by men that's full of darkness. That don't mean they murderers and blood drinkers, but meaning they corrupted with the belief systems of the world. So people can't comprehend that we have wisdom because they can't get past our outward appearance. Or for example, if we cut somebody out or we gotta handle somebody roughly, you know what I'm saying? They say, see, you're not a man of the Lord. Well, they're looking on the outward appearance. Cause they don't know that men of the Lord always put people in their place. And, and what's the what's the first word in that phrase, man of the Lord? It's a man. So, you know, we're not gonna let nobody walk all over us or take advantage of us. Like sometimes people gotta be handled roughly. But continuing to the book of John, there was a man sent from Yahweh whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That's the wisdom. That was the true light, which light of every man that cometh into the world. So we lit by that true light. That's why we shine brighter than most others. And that's in the eyes of the Lord. But in the eyes of men, this brightness shines by our ability to go into the scriptures. In the scripture that I just seen, that I wanted to show, Proverbs 20, 27. So again, um, so John, he was not the light, but was sent to bear witness to that light. That applies to us, the man of the Lord. We not that light, we bear witness to it. We testify of it. We tell you of the true light. That's your how it shot through the Holy Scriptures. And that's the true light, the true form of wisdom and understanding, the highest form of knowledge. That can't be attained easily. And that was the true light, which light of every man that cometh into the world. That's why Proverbs 20 and 27, the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord. <clears throat> Searching all the inward parts of the belly. So our spirit is a light, it's a candle. And by our spirit, which is a candle, does the Lord search the inner parts of men. Now, because with a candle, you in dark, you can find stuff. You can find stuff out with a flashlight. Spirit is like a flashlight to the Lord. So the Lord uses our spirit as a light to search out who we are. But that's why, um, but that's why uh, most people uh, have a trouble believing us. Because when we tell people we got people think we be having CDs and rap music and art. When we tell them we be reading the scriptures, most people just cannot get around our appearance. <clears throat> but even the prophets of old, they wasn't all potted stuff. They was always traveling all over the place teaching. And not knowing that the, the true men of, of the Lord would have a garment. And that's what we wear. That's what the prophets of old wore back in the day was a garment. They never wore no tuxedos. That's the suit of a devil. But, but since we, you know, got that out the way real quick, let's, um, Let's hit Amos 8 and 11 real quick. Because, hey, we, we could only have a couple more weeks left in this ministry. It's winding down. The clock is ticking. And what's going to be it? Would it be a cyber attack that brings down the internet? Would it be Russia that's going to shoot down U.S. satellites? 
that might bring down the world wide web? Or would it be a blackout? We know the blackout coming. Or would it be all, all of them at once? We know a blackout is coming. But what's about to happen with the midterm elections? You got World War III brewing up. Most people starting to predict that some kind of disaster gonna, gonna uh, some kind of disaster gonna happen, which will prohibit the midterm election from taking place. But Amos eight and eleven, behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. So there's going to be a shortage of hearing these words. And how do the words be heard by man speaking it? The only people that speaking the words of the Lord is the true prophets. Then you know you got the you got the fake prophets and the prophets that ain't got the full truth. They speaking the words of the Lord. Hey, but the Lord gonna dispose of them. They gonna start to die off, leaving only the true man of the Lord, his servants, the prophets. We the only ones. That's really going into the scriptures, speaking the words of the Lord. So when we're not able to speak, that's going to be the famine of the word. When we're not able to speak in public, when we're not able to speak on the Internet because there's a blackout, because the Internet went down, that's going to be the famine of the Lord. Now, verse 12, and they shall wander from sea to sea and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord. They shall not find it. This is concerning the internet. Because you can surf the internet like you surf the sea. And what you call the search engines. You say, oh, the search engine is running. That's your web page loading. So people are going to search the word of the Lord and shall not find it. And I just throw it out there. I think there's north to the east. That's talking about from America to Jerusalem. Not those lands, but people going to be looking for anything. They're going to be looking for your standard American Christian teachings, which would be the north. Because what? North America. So they're going to be teaching the wisdom. They're going to be searching the wisdom, seeking the wisdom that's taught here in North America. And they're going to be seeking the wisdom that come from the East. What's to be the true man of the Lord? Matter of fact, let me search this scripture real quick. I think it'd be better understood if I could find it. All right, so when it said they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east, meaning they're gonna be looking for it. They're gonna be looking for any understanding in that day. Rather, it's the Christianity that's taught here in North America, or rather, it's the true wisdom, not as an understanding of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai that's taught from the east. Now, this don't mean over there in the Middle East. This who 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 would who would the East represent? It represent the prophets. That's why right here in Second Ezra, I can't remember what chapter chapter this is. I can't see. But Second Ezra it read, "And our brother, behold what glory, and see the people that come from the East, unto whom I would give for leaders: Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hosea, Amos, Micah, Job, Obadiah, and Jonah." So the men of the East, the people that come from the East would be the prophets. The prophets are old. So the men of the East would be the ancient prophets, but it would be the prophets that's back today. We would be the people that come from the East, even though we here in North America. So when it says they should wander from sea to sea, from the North, even to the East, that's concerning your standard white man's Christianity your pastors and your preachers, 
they're going to be looking for those people and they're going to be looking for the people that come from the east which would be the prophets of old you know the true man of the lord that's what they're going to be looking for because notice it doesn't say nothing about south or about the west because the scriptures refer to america as the land of the north but the people of the east will describe the servants the prophets now we're going to show real quick that this north represents north america behold oh jeremiah 16 and 16 behold i will send for many fishers saith the lord and they shall fish them that's the man of the lord that's trying to reel in the true believers and after i was sent for many hunters oops i'm sorry let me go up one it's actually verse 15 that i'm looking for matter of fact i gotta hit 14 to bring forward understanding Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be said, the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. So we're not going to talk about our first salvation no more, but we're going to only speak about the second salvation. But the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. That's talking about North America. It ain't talking about North Korea or no North Dakota is about North America. The land where the Lord's chosen people were going to captivity for 400 years. So that cancels out North Korea. So yeah, but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the North and from all the lands whither he had driven them. So this begins with North America and all the other lands after. So that's why when we see they shall wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east. This is concerning the wisdom, Christianity that's taught here in North America, and the wisdom that's taught from the men, from the people that come from the east, which would be the prophets. But we're going to continue with Matthew chapter 24. We're going to try to finish that chapter today because we're pretty much doing a, a read through of the New Testament. That's just what the Spirit put on me to do. We're going to review this part a bunch of times and we're going to review it again. I'll go through it a little more quickly though so we can bring out other scriptures. But that's why here it reads, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So once this true wisdom would circle the globe, then the end will come. We got prophets in the Philippines, in Europe, Australia, and Russia showing that this wisdom has circled the earth and then shall the end come and when did this knowledge circle the earth in the 2000s you know in the past and in like the past five years and in the past five years that's when the end started to come uh most notably 2020 signifying that this wisdom has circled the globe which means that cancels out christianity that cancels out Islam, because Islam been circled the globe. Christianity been circled the earth. Because Christianity and Islam, that's two of the most popular religions. It's been around all this time, but the end ain't came yet. Those two religions been around all this time, but ain't no global lockdown happened yet. But with this Hebrew Israelite stuff, it circled the globe. What happened in 2020? A lockdown. That's showing that this is the gospel that got to be preached. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, speaking of the so-called white man, about to lock down America, spoken of by David the prophet, standing in the holy place. 
who saw Rita, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Now this not talking about the ancient land of Judea. This not talking about people that's in Judea today, but the people of Judea, the people that come from the east, which would be the true Israelites, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So let us which come from the east flee into the mountains, pretty much flee the cities. This is the time that we coming into. I mean, what? The blackout happened. Because when the blackout happened, that's when Esau gonna roll in his military to do a military lockdown of the streets of America. The FEMA camps gonna go into full operation. That's when we flee. Let him, which is on the housetop, not come down to take anything out of his house. Pretty much mean that um, forsake your house. Whatever is on the inside, leave it. Because you know, you know, ultimately the Lord don't want you to hide on your roof. He wants you to flee to the wilderness. Because it's going to be nothing but death, death, and more death in the cities. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. So yeah, once you make a run for it, don't turn back for anything. And woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. Those with babies, very young children, breastfeeding, you ain't gonna make it. They're gonna be the first ones to perish unless they part of the elect and the Lord is with them. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, these are on the Sabbath. And we coming into the winter and all the major holidays over the next few months are going to be right on the Sabbath or right after the Sabbath. For example, Halloween, that's tomorrow night. That's on the Sabbath. Uh, I believe Thanksgiving is right after the Sabbath. So stuff going to be popping off this winter and it's going to be centered around the holy days, the Sabbaths and the new moons. Why it's a wise thing to honor those days and at least be aware of them. Yep, again, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation. Because what? We're in a tribulation right now. You can't tell me 2020 how many so-called Negroes got shot by these polices. You can't tell me we're not in a tribulation. We're 2020, the lockdown of America, and people dying from this medicine that Esau created. This is the tribulation. But what? But what? There's going to be a great tribulation. So, we're in a time of trouble now. But we, we're going to be in a we're going to be in a time of great trouble. You know, for the time that we're coming into coming what this winter that's why it says pray that your flight be not in the winter neither on a sabbath day because when the winter come then shall be great tribulation so this winter is going to be great tribulation we're going to let esau stupid motorcycle gang take off before we continue These people ain't gone yet. All right, so I just get a little closer to the mic. Yeah, because once the winter comes, then it should be great tribulation. We're coming into the winter right now. 
It's about to be November in a couple days. See how fast October flew by. So then should be great tribulation. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. So there's never been a time of trouble like the time of the great tribulation that we're coming into. No, nor ever shall be. Neither shall be. Now we got the Iranians over here protesting what's going on in Iran. So we're going we gonna to let them go away real quick. So anyways, this should not be a time of trouble as great as a time of trouble that we're coming into. Um, then as we continue, and accept those days should be shortened. The days of the great tribulation. Time is moving faster. The days are shorter. Uh, November going to fly by. So the days, the Lord might shorten these days to be 18 hours, 16 hours. Hey, we might have 12 hour days, you know, going through the winter or however short the Lord shorten it, you know, it's up to him. But showing, you know, this time is fastly approaching. And the people that ain't came into this by now ain't gonna never come into it. Because what? They are overtaken by the cares of the world. And that this day is going to take them as unawares. As a matter of fact, that's also in the scriptures. So let's read this. We're going to hit Luke, I think the 21st chapter. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, the people that's in this truth, that's in this gathering, those days should be shortened. So it's going to be shortened for our safety. Now let's hit Luke 21 and 21 is something. Uh, excuse me. Dang, I know it's in here somewhere. Dang, excuse me. Uh, let me search the scripture real quick. Yeah, Luke 2134, but I overlooked it. All right, so again, except those days should be shortened. There's no flesh be saved. The days are getting shorter and shorter, meaning they're going by faster. So again, the people who not in this by now ain't going to never get into it. Because they think, oh, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to handle that. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to get into the scriptures. Well, the Lord tricked them. Because you got all this busy work to do and you keep putting it off. You thought that you had 24 hours, seven days a week. Not knowing that the Lord didn't shorten the days to what? To 18 hours, to 14 hours, to 12 hours. So you're done. You don't got 24 hours in a day. Let's say you got 20 hours in a day, seven days a week. So now you're never going to catch up on your works. You're never going to catch up on your labors. You're just going to be busy until the end. And that's why Luke chapter 21 and 34. And take heed unto yourselves. Take heed is mean to what? to watch, to analyze, to evaluate. So take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. 
<clears throat> Matter of fact, before we continue, let me look at what this word means. Because I've never seen this word before. Charge is a feather. <clears throat> so, yeah, um, Lord said, Take heed unto yourselves that any time your hearts be overcharged um, with surfeiting meaning things that carry your heart away from the scriptures. And then what? And drunkenness, not being sober. Now that's not just physically being sober, but being drunken with other doctrines. And what? And the cares of this life. And so that they come upon you unawares. So yeah, let's read this again. Take heed unto yourselves, Let's say any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that the day come upon you unawares. So, yeah, because of the cares of this life, the cares of this world, the burdens of men, your day to day activities trying to um, build yourself up in America. Um, that's the cares of this world the cares of this life, then what? The day of judgment, the nuclear destruction, the famine, the blackout is gonna come upon you unawares. You thought you had 24 hours in a day, the Lord snared you. The Lord know that you're gonna be yes some by, with that excuse by saying you're gonna come, you know, after you do this and do that. Well, the Lord just snared you. So now instead of 24 hours in a day, you got 20 hours in a day. Then eventually you got 16 hours in a day. So you can never piece together that you're not getting ahead, that you're just falling more and more behind. No, you're not getting ahead because the day is getting shorter. So what? The cares of this life so that the day come upon you unawares. So that's why the, the day is getting shorter. It benefits the elect because we already in this. The Lord is going to shorten the time till our salvation to the kingdom but the two-thirds the time being shortened it actually works against them it it, it, it it helps us but it harms them because they think they got a certain amount of time but really they got less time than they can imagine because because of the characters of his life that day is going to come upon them unawares That's why it says, for the elect's sake, those days should be shortened. Because we're the only ones that's going to benefit from the days being shortened. Also, Esau, he got a certain amount of time to establish his new world order. Esau thought he had seven days a week, 24 hours a day, not knowing that the Lord is short in the days. So you know what? 20 hours, 18 hours, and so on. Then if any man say to you, lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. And this don't mean that all these false prophets gonna come at the end. The false prophets been here. Christianity, your pastors, your preachers, going back to the 90s and going back to the 60s. So yeah, false prophets shall shoot great signs and wonders and so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Meaning, these, these, these false prophets, these fake preachers, they're going to deceive everybody. They will almost get the elect if it were possible. 
but it's not possible. That's why the Lord says, I have reserved 7,000 men who did not bow down to need to bail. Matter of fact, we're going to look for that real quick. All right, that's Romans 11 to 4. So yet again, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So meaning the elect, it's impossible for the elect to be deceived. It's a spiritual thing. We was built this way. But that's why the Lord says in Romans 11 to 4. But what's safe to answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. What's the image of Baal? It's his system. And what's the image of the beast? It's the system of the beast. The white man, Esau, it's his system. That microchip, this digital system, we're not going to bow with knee to it. We're not going to bow with knee, meaning we're not going to stick our arm out to get punctured. Hopefully that's a safe word to use. <clears throat> Behold, I have told you before. So yeah. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in a desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so also so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So yeah, that's that, that's that same light. That's what? This wisdom, not as an understanding. That's this lightning. Let's read it again. For as the lightning cometh out of the east. What does the east represent? It represents the, the servants, the prophets, the men of the Lord. We the people that come from the east. Israel, Jerusalem. And this lightning represent the truth. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, yeah, this wisdom, not as an understanding, coming from the east, meaning it's coming from the people that come from the east. And what? It shineth in darkness. It shineth even unto the west. What is the west known as? It's known as North America. You know, we the west. So yeah, this wisdom, not as an understanding, they come from the east and shine in the west. Come from the man of the Lord, the ancient prophets, and it's shining here on the stage, which is America. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. So yeah, when the Lord return, where is he going to go first? Israel and Jerusalem. Then from there, he's going to fly to America. So shall also the coming of the son of man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will be eagles, there will there will the eagles be gathered together. Yeah, this is in the West. Because the West is America is known as what? The Eagle. What's the carcass? Our people that ain't got the spirit on them. Meaning they spiritually dead. Meaning wherever our people are spiritually dead at, wherever the carcass at. You're going to find Esau there. That's why the scriptures say, If thou shalt be in adversity, thou shalt find him there first. So meaning that if you're spiritually dead, you're not spiritually dead for a reason. It's what? It's an eagle there. It's Esau there. He the reason you're spiritually dead. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened. So after the great tribulation, it's going to be the nuclear destruction that's going to block out the sun. The moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The stars from, that fall from heaven does represent Esau father, not a power because his kingdom, his rulership is his heaven. So when his kingdom is being destroyed by these nuclear missiles, that's the stars falling from heaven. Not only that, the, the revelation talk about a war in heaven. That's what? 
that's that's the dragon and his angels that's esau and his jet fighters fight against yahweh shai and the holy angels that's why they make movies like star trek that's going to be literally esau falling from heaven he's going to be amongst the stars falling from heaven back to the earth because as they get zapped and destroyed they're going to fall back to the earth that's why it says the, the stars shall fall from heaven because what stars occupy the heavens when you look in the outer space it's filled with stars esau's rulership his kingdom is filled with edomites so they the stars that's going to fall from their heaven they the people that's going to fall from their empire that's uh you know uh literal and physical and the powers of heaven shall be shaken that shaking is literal there's going to be a great earthquake from this nuclear destruction. So the powers that be, Esau and his rulership, they're going to be shaken out of place, out of heaven. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. What's that sign? That's that fathership. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. That's all peoples. So yeah, people thought they was going to be celebrating and rejoicing when they see the Son of Man appear in heaven, meaning the what? Appear in the sky, coming from what you people call outer space. No, nah, people not going to celebrate and rejoice. People going to mourn because the sight of the Lord coming with that fathership is going to be overwhelming. Even for us true believers, it's going to be overwhelming. The everything gonna be shaking and vibrating you you ain't gonna be able to put your you ain't gonna be able to put your finger on it to describe the sensation that we're gonna feel even our spirits gonna be rocked that everything's gonna be more everything gonna be uh morning hey that goes for the animals and the trees hey the wind gonna stop all the animals the birds the fishes of the sea the dogs the birds, they all going to be at command. And that's in the scriptures too. It says even the animals going to be at command. So you're going to know that it's not no aliens. Because you're going to be like, who is this be that even the animals be at command? So yeah, all tribes of the earth is going to mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. What did the Lord say in Psalms what? Is it 134? No, it's not 134. Was it 104 and 3? So yeah, the Lord said, uh, they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven but this is not talking about the clouds in the sky because the clouds that we see in the sky that's the clouds of the earth but what would what would what would the clouds of heaven be well let's go back to psalms 104 and 3 and just we're gonna read just this middle part uh just to, to make this breakdown who make of the clouds his chariots a chariot is a vehicle so any time we see the son of man coming in clouds or talk about the clouds of heaven or a great cloud that cloud is talking about the chariot and we know chariot by definition means a vehicle of transportation so when we see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven coming in the chariots of heaven because remember what he make up the clouds his chariot so cloud is a code word for chariot or a code word for vehicle of transportation. So meaning the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven, the son of man coming in the chariots of heaven, meaning we're gonna see the son of man coming in the vehicles of heaven, the vehicles of transportation from the heavens with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect 
from the four winds. This would be the nuclear destruction because the nuclear destruction travels in all directions, north, south, east, west, and everything in between. But we're gonna be gathered from this destroying wind from one end of heaven to the other. Meaning this nuclear destruction, these destroying winds is gonna circle the entire globe, the entire earth. And that's concerning the nuclear destruction. So uh, now we're gonna hit Matthew 24 and 32. Now I learned the parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth ye leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So when you see the trees bringing forth fruit and flowers, you know that summer is nigh. So that's what they got to saying. April showers bring May flowers. And what does the summer represent? It represents uh, the coming of the Son of Man, the coming of Yahweh Shah. Because what Esau represents the winter, the cold, the dark, everything dead, but the summer, you know, it represents the outside. That represents that light that's bringing forth life. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. So yeah, we coming to the door of the great tribulation. And what's gonna be the thing that represents that is gonna be the blackout this winter. It's like when you step outside, it's cold and it's dark. Cause the winter is what? It's cold. Biden said it's gonna be a dark winter meaning it's gonna be a cold, dark winter. That's like you stepping through that door, you step into the outside. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So Yahweh Shai was talking about the generation back then. That generation is here back today. That's why the scriptures speak of regeneration. That meaning to be reborn, what the world calls reincarnation. But well, that same generation that you have shy talking to is back today. That's why the people that come from the East is back today. A tomb whom I would give for leaders. Well, the leaders is the ancient prophets. They're the ones who lead in this ministry. Starting with the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, Abba Bivens, those are the leaders in the man of the Lord today. And there's be many more prophets than listed here. But all the prophets are back. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. What's the earth? It's the works of the earth. Things that's built by men. America, Europe, it's a kingdom, it's an empire that's built by men. And what's the heaven? It would be the people in rulership. So Esau and his empire that he built is going to pass away. But my words shall not pass away. This is the book of Matthew. The first book of the New Testament. So when Yahweh Shai was saying his word shall not pass away, none of this stuff was written down yet because it was still happening. So what words is Yahweh Shai talking about? He's talking about the Old Testament. Those that that's his word that was given by the Holy Spirit for the ancient prophets to write. So yeah, none of the Old Testament prophecies are going to pass away because people say that don't matter like the Old Testament passed away. But here in the New Testament, at the very beginning, as the stuff was happening, Yahweh Shai said that his word shall not pass away. That's the words he's speaking now, but also the Old Testament. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only, Yahweh. Only he know the time. But guess what? The holy angels are already here. That's why we've seen so many so-called UFO sightings, which we know are the chariots of the Lord, the vehicles of the heavens, the vehicles of transportation for the angels, which makes sense. Because if people saw 
angels in the sky, people would know, oh, we at the end. But that's why the Lord says that the day is going to come upon you unawares because the angels are hidden behind these UFOs. So to keep the people in confusion, those who are seeking the Lord surely know what it is. But the people that's in darkness and confusion, they BSing. They don't know that's the, that's the angels up there. That's only for those with understanding to see. For as in the days of, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. Yeah, because let's go back to Luke twenty-one to thirty-four. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the cares of this life, so that they come upon you unawares. So in the time of Noah, when the flood came, the flood came upon them unawares. Because let's go back. It said, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So yeah, that day came upon them unawares. They didn't know until the flood came. So I mean, they got took by surprise. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. The scriptures speak of the Son of Man um, coming with brightness. That's the destruction. So y'all yeah, side gonna come with the destruction. So meaning that the nuclear destruction beginning with America is going to take people unawares. Even in this generation, the people are not going to know until the nuclear missiles come and take them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How you doing? <clears throat> so pretty much speaking, uh, bringing some understanding to the Bible because it's been taught incorrectly by our oppressors. So pretty much, the God of the Bible destroyed Egypt and he's going to save his people. That's why America been coming down, especially the last few years. That's some plague in America like he plagued Egypt. You know, America not going to bounce back. Stuff not going to go back to normal. It's going to be famines. It's going to be a real pandemic that people actually die from. Um, and that's what's coming. Yeah, we see the we see the wars. Um, that's what's going to be destroyed. That's what's going to uh, destroy America. But you know, in Christian church, they speak the world ended by fire. They they can't really tell you what that fire is. They may talk about hell, but the ground not going to open up. The destruction going to come from above. That's a nuclear missile. Just like in the time of Noah, the destruction came from above, being the raindrops. Well, the Lord going to rain again on the earth with the nuclear missiles. That's why the nuclear missiles is shaped like a raindrop. Then when the water splashes, that's a miniature explosion. You know what the nuclear missiles going to do. And then the Lord going to save his people, which should be the true Israelites over here. You know, the Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Because um, salvation ain't for everybody. Uh, like the Christian church preaches. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's that's pretty much the gist of it. Sure, and thank you for and encourage, bro. Encourage to stand and let people know. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. Yeah, uh, the Lord likes to have people speak speak what He's gonna do before He do it. Yeah. So uh, He always lets us know. Always. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He always lets us know. Oh yeah, you know. Uh, many people may reject it. But they gonna remember that crazy guy wearing a dress. <laughs> but that's but awesome. but that's how the that's how the prophets dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I'm not just and I'm not just saying we the Lord's chosen people, we got proof. Uh ancient pictures yeah. found in Jerusalem, Rome, all over there, what's called the Middle East. Yeah. We the chosen people. And then the chosen so uh <laughs> just some more proof. So those Israelis and those Jewish people, yeah, they they're not the Jewish people. And it's going to be known because Israel is going to be destroyed by Iran. Got it.
And uh, when that happens, people going to wonder why didn't the Lord protect them because they ain't the true people. That's why you got all this stuff going on with Kanye West right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, it's, it's causing a lot of, it's stirring things up. That's yeah. all set up by the Lord. Got it. So, yeah. <laughs> Doing what you're doing, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for uh, stopping by. Y'all take care now. So, yeah. And they knew not until the flood, until the missiles came and took them all away. Now, people just read this because the Lord worded it so smoothly. But really, if we want to use more harsh language, we could reword it and say, and knew not until the flood came and killed everybody on the earth. So yeah, people not gonna know until the missiles come and burn everybody up on the earth. Fire hundreds of millions degrees. So that's, that's, that's what's going on. But uh, tomorrow, Lord willing, we're going to finish up chapter 24. We're going to finish up the book of Matthew. After the book of Matthew, if it's still time, we're going to do a read through of the book of John. Because Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John pretty much tell a lot of the same stuff. I say Matthew, Mark, and Luke is more similar. John is pretty similar, but a few different things. And then I got a lesson where I'm going to summarize all of Paul's letters. Lord willing, I get to it before the blackout. So that's going to be us pretty much going through the entire New Testament, which is the most uh, screwed up part of the Bible. So um, are we going to close out? Call her law, Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, Wahweh, Kadash. And until next time, Shalom.